Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Just, come on. Let's give God some praise. Continue to give God some praise because God is good and he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Our Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Was trying to make a decision on whether I should get up and preach or not because pastor is on 321. Amen. Amen. But we're going to flow. And we're going to do what the Lord will have us to do. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18. Amen. Isaiah 43, verses 18. 43 and 18, a familiar text. A familiar text. Amen. 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 Received a text earlier this morning to be on standby. Amen. Isaiah 43, verses 18. If you got it, say, we got it. Amen. And the Bible says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now will it spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time, God. Consecrate me. Use me for your glory, God. Let Robert disappear. Let only you speak. You get all the glory. You get all the praise. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 For a topic, for a topic, I would like to use, it's time for something new. It's time for something new. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. There comes a time in your life when you decide enough is enough, and you become tired of being sick and tired, and you're tired of the problems and the issues in life. It looks like all hello has broke loose, and you feel like you have, you've been picked out to be picked on. You become frustrated. You have so many unanswered questions. You're angry and you're disappointed. You ask yourself why. You ask others why. You stand there looking at yourself in the mirror and asking God why. Look at your neighbor and say why. why. You find yourself living in a place where your past won't let you out and your future won't let you in. There seems to be something missing. There seems to be a void in your life. You can't seem to fill that void. You find yourself trying all kinds of things to fill a void, but nothing seems to work. After you come off that high, you're still faced with that problem. Say missing void. Yeah, missing void. For some of you, you know you feel like life has knocked you down with disappointments, setbacks, and setups. You've been hit. You've been beat down. You feel broken down. But I come to tell you today that whatever you do, don't stay down. Get back up. Dust yourself off. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Get up in the morning. Put your shoulders back and look in your mirror and say, I've come too far to stop now. I may be knocked down, but I'm not knocked out. I may be going back up again, but I'm going to keep on moving. Tell yourself there's more to life than this. The devil wants you to think that you're not smart. He wants you to think that you're not intelligent. He wants you to think that you're not anointed. He wants you to feel guilty about your mistakes. He wants to keep them over your head. He wants you to feel less than who you really are. He wants you to second guess the power you really have. Many of us are not living what God intended for us to be. We're living below the bar. We're living below standards. We're living what other people are dictating what we should be. Not what God has called us to be. We're living in an era, we're living in a stage that we should not be moving in. Say something new. Say something new. 
something new. Yes, 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 yes. Check this out. So, because we're living in this way, we're living in this standard that's below what God has had, that's called us to be, you find yourself, you're really a friendly person, but you've been hurt so much that you've altered your own personality because of the other bipolar, irregular, crazy folk. Yeah. You altered yourself. Yeah, these people, they liked you better when you were down, when you were struggling and broke. They liked you better when you had that low self-esteem. They liked you better when you was walking with your head down and just being quiet. They liked you better when you was ignorant and, uh, excuse me, when you was ignorant and you didn't have any intelligence. Amen? Pray for me, pray for me. It's been a minute since I've been behind this sacred stand. Amen? Pray for me. Amen. But check this out. So as soon, as soon you started on a comeback, <laughs> as soon things started looking better, all of a sudden they started thinking that you were stuck up, arrogant, but I come to tell you when God gets you on your feet, when God elevates you to a place you've never been, I tell you, don't apologize to nobody. Because when God is going, when you were going to commit suicide, they were not there. Oh my God. They were not there when you was going to throw in the towel. They were not there. So when God lifts you up, tell me, excuse me, baby. I'm going to bless the Lord and give him the best I got. So punch the devil in the face because he told you you'll never get up. He told you you'll never get on your feet. But doggone it, baby, I'm getting my groove back. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Praise God for a minute because your haters couldn't keep you down. Give God some praise because they couldn't stop you. Look at you now. Look at yourself right now. It's a new season. It's a new day. They couldn't stop you, baby. They couldn't stop you. You're standing right here, and they were right here in your ear, nagging, talking negativity, talking about you, saying you couldn't do it, saying you nothing about it. I tell you something, youth, it's okay to walk by yourself. I'm looking right at my babies right now. I want you to understand it is okay to take a stand, to be different, to be the one that sets the bar. Set the bar, baby. Be the one that makes the difference. Be the one that set it off. Let me tell you something. Don't be the one that's running to the crowd. You want to know why? Because it's already crowded. The crowd, it's already crowded. So why go with the crowd? You set the standard. You set the new move. You do the new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, look at me now. Yeah. I come to tell you, despite your trials and your tribulations, despite your setbacks, despite all the hurt and the pain, God wants you to do a new thing. He wants, you to, give, he wants to give you a new beginning. He doesn't want you to give up. So don't go around thinking you've hit your peak, that you've reached your limits in life. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your parents. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your church. Don't give up on your pastor. Don't give up on your leaders. Don't give up on yourself. It's time to rise up because if one door closes, God will open up another door. If all the doors closes, he'll open up a window. If all the windows are closed, he'll knock down a wall. God always wants to give you a fresh beginning. It's a new day, and God wants you to do something new in your life. So it's time you to begin thinking differently about your life. It's time to get rid of the old friends, the old attitudes, the old habits, the old lifestyles, the old prayers, the old worship. It's time to usher in the new. Everybody say new. 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 Yes, Lord, yes. God is ready to reveal his glory in a new way. The question is, are you ready to receive it? 
It's time for something bigger. It's time for something greater. It's time for something more. Something that's out of the box. Say out of the box. Yeah, out of the box. The Bible tells us, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. A new thing. In order to do a new thing, you got to forget about the old thing. Right? All right? So we must accept that the past is gone. We must accept that the past is gone. Right? So if the past is gone, we all understand that we all have issues from the past. Right? Either from choices we made or circumstances outside of our control. But for many of us, they are constantly haunting us and reminding us, and those are the things that dictate how we live. So we got to get rid of that past. See, if the issues are never addressed, we will find ourselves always in a hurry, going nowhere fast. We find ourselves doing the moonwalk, stuck in reverse. How many of you see yourself, you take one step forward, something comes up, and now you're taking three steps back? two steps forward. Then you got to move over and still take three steps back. We have to overcome our past because our past can be pulling on our coattail, getting you to look back. And if you're trying to go forward and you're always looking back, you're getting off course. And then you find yourself running into something you don't have no mess being in, and then you find yourself stuck in a situation, and now you got your back on your future, and you can't see where you're supposed to go, you can't see where you're supposed to be, and then you find yourself doing stuff that is not you, and you find yourself going further and further and further away from your future! Give God some praise, amen? Come on, let's give God some praise. Give God some praise because your past is not your past. Your past is not what's going to propel you into your future. So anytime you feel something pulling in your coattail, it's a slingshot. So the more it pulls on you, the more it pulls on you, once you confess it and realize that I'm tired of this past, baby, God's going to release you and then boom! You take off. Get out your past. They told you you wouldn't make it. They told you you were stupid. They told you you weren't going to be able to do anything. I was told I wasn't going to do anything without a father. Growing up as a young kid, my parents got divorced. I grew up without my dad. I had anger issues. I was told I wasn't going to amount to anything, right? What do y'all see up here on this stage? I'm telling you, youth don't let nobody try to stop you. I'm sorry, this is in me because I lived it. I lived it. Do not let nobody try to stop you or dictate you. Now, parents... Grandparents, leaders, our babies need us. Because I didn't get up here by myself. I didn't get up here by myself. I had a praying grandmother. Oh, Lord. And the one thing my grandmother told me, she said, don't get angry at your father. Anger will keep you in your past. Anger will set you back. Anger will shut you down. Anger will stop you from growing. Anger will have you fighting any and everything. You're fighting yourself. You find like you don't even like your own self because you're angry. And a lot of times, a lot of youth are angry and they don't know why they're angry. And then they develop that deaf and dumb spirit because they can't hear nothing. They can't understand nothing. So they're going around, ah! They're fighting, they're yelling, they're setting it off because they don't know how to express what's going on inside of them. Look around us today. Look at the communication level that's going on. We got to understand that our youth are dealing with a battle. A lot of them don't know their identity, and then they're stuck in technology. 
So you got the combination of identity and technology, and if they don't know who they are, technology will tell them who they are. And because we can't always get into their technology, we can't intercede and tell them, no, baby, this is not the way. So I'm going to deputize everyone in here who has a baby with a phone. I deputize you right now in the name of Jesus to grab that baby's phone and look what's going through it. Amen? We have to know what's going on with our babies. It's a new day. It's a new season. We have to walk with authority and confidence to let the devil know, nah, -uh, not my child. Not today. Not ever. All right? And what we must understand, our babies, our babies, God has given us our babies as gifts, but also they are our assignments. Mm, think about that. So how are we handling our assignment? An assignment has a little more power to it. Because what happens when you're on a job or you're in a school and you don't do your assignment? You don't do your assignment in school, you get a failing grade. You don't do your assignment at work, you could get fired. So if you're failing, you're always going back. And if you get fired, you're always in lack. So how are we handling our assignment? Say assignment. Our babies are our assignments. The Lord just took me clean off my page, y'all. Mm. Y'all excuse me. Because my passion for our youth is unexplainable. Because we, like Pastor said, we got to get them. And see, here's, and then watch this. Let me show you how the enemy is so smart. He, he uses a very simple word. And there's an acronym I put with the word. The enemy keeps us busy. Being under Satan's yoke. Busy. So we find ourselves dropping our baby off here. And then we got to go to the store, and then we're trying to work, and then we got to go pick up our baby. And then we got to go over here, and then our baby has this practice, they got this homework assignment, and then I got to handle my stuff at home, then I got to handle my things that are going on, and then I got debt and bill collectors calling me, and I'm spinning every which way, and I, ooh, we're going to, uh, wait a minute, we forgot about church. It's real. It's real. We're busy. We're busy. We feel like we're doing things. We feel like we're helping our babies excel and get to the next level because the cost of the next level is crazy. So now we're working on their gifts to get them to the next level so they can pay for the next level. But what we must understand, we have to balance these things out because once they get to the next level, they're going to need the word of God because there's so much stuff that is on that college campus that will take our babies out. They will come home and you won't even know who your child is. They will get up there and get stuck on something, strung out on something, connected to somebody, and you're looking at your child like they cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You're looking at the child like, who in the are you? You are upset and don't understand what is going on. It's because we didn't have any balance. We're busy. We're stuck in a cycle. We're stuck. The systems have got us tricked. If you find yourself being busy, raise your hand. I got my hand up. I got my hand up. I know I found myself busy. And the enemy just the gas is locked up. And we always say, okay, well, I can read the word. I can get it myself. You know, I got it. I got it. Okay, but we got it, right? But are we really getting it? Because... Okay, so if we don't make it to church, are we conducting Bible study at home? I know, I know, I know it didn't happen in my house. I'm just going to be real. It didn't happen in my house. I read the word. And then every now and then I would talk to my kids and I always tell them to stick with God and stay with God. But did I give them any ammunition with the word? 
Uh, did I give them anything that where the enemy could come and spit something in their ear and get them all twisted? They would be able to fight back with it. How are we handling our assignments? How are we handling our assignments? When we really think about it and look about it, look at it, we find ourselves, okay, we need to regroup, we need to reset, we need to realign. And it's not going to be easy because we're going to have to break strongholds, we're going to have to break patterns, you're going to have to, we, it's, it's time for a new thing. And anytime something new happens, there's going to be some things that are going to make you uncomfortable. There's going to be some things, youth, when your parents start giving you these new rules and these new standards, line up. I'm going to help you out now, parents. Youth, line up with your parents. Parents, line up with God. Because I'm going to tell you, if we don't line up with God, they're going to pick it up. <laughs> Is it the same mouth you do praise and worship with, the same mouth you cussing them out every day? Now, there's going to be times where you're going to get in their face. You notice I said every day. There's going to be times where you got to jack your baby up. But is it a lifestyle? What kind of lifestyle are we living? What kind of lifestyle are we setting for our children? What do our children see us doing in the church? Do they see us always arguing? Or do they see us worshiping? Do they see us gossiping? Do they see us in cliques? What is going on in the pews that make our youth go, ooh? Right? What causes them to disconnect? What is it? What is it that we're doing to reach out to them? How are we engaging our babies? What are we doing to get them? And let me help you. Let me help you. The Bible says we must be fishermen of men. And you can't fish without bait. So we have to engage, and we have to engage in a way of something they like to feed on. So we have to drop something in front of them that they feed on. So if you see the church moving in a direction that's trying to feed our youth, but it doesn't feed you, still look. We're trying to reach a generation that has a different taste, a different flavor, a different style, a different outset or outlook. They don't see things like we see. They don't eat like we eat. Now, youth, let me help you here. If you're on a bridge that's 200 feet high and you got nothing but water and sharks in it, and you're with a friend that has never driven a car before, and they're telling you to get in the car and drive across the bridge, versus your parent is in a car and they've driven across this bridge for the, their whole life, they've been through this, they understand which way to go. Who are you getting in the car with? I just made it real plain. You're going to get in there with your friend that don't know how to drive because they cool and you're going to be with the crowd or you're going to get in there with your parents that you think that's lame and they think you're old school and they don't know what they're talking about but your parents are going to get you to the other side. Your friends, do you think they might get you to the other side? So youth, we got to connect with our parents. Parents, we got to connect with our youth. It's a two-way avenue. We can't shut each other down. We have to listen. We got to have some structure. We got to have some order. There has to be order. So here's, here's what I'm trying to figure out. When you go to school, you get out of order, you get in trouble. When we go to work, we got out of order, we get in trouble. 
when we're at home or in the church. Mm, maybe. Right? So at home, youth, when your parents set rules, why are you questioning them all the time? Why are you getting upset all the time? Parents, now listen, watch this. Parents, if the child is trying to understand and not trying to be sneaky, y'all get the difference, right? Right? Some of them ask questions just trying to test you. But some of them may ask questions because they don't understand. All right? So if they are genuinely trying to understand the situation, we have to listen. We can't just say, ah, uh-uh, uh-uh, because we don't know what's going on in the head. So we got to have balance. We got to understand this thing, because if we shut our babies down, they got technology, y'all. They could be upset about something, and they go and express their whole situation to their friends, and they're putting it out there, and they got people communicating with them because their, you, their friends are going through the same thing that they're going through, and so they're able to connect with them, and then all of a sudden, yo, you want to hit this? We frustrated, we upset. When they hit this, snort this, taste this, touch this, do this, right? And then now we're losing our babies to something else now. Now our assignment has truly gone left just because we thought we knew it all. Right? So there, there's a story in the Bible that's a good example of this. And it was, it's, it's when um, Samuel was going to the house of Jesse to pick out a new king. All right? I shared some of this on Wednesday night when we had a youth service in here. And Samuel came to the house to pick out a new king, and Jesse lined up all his sons but one. Remember, assignment. We got to know each of our youth's assignment. Each of our babies have an assignment. They have a gift. They have a talent. They have a purpose. And it's up to us to make sure that they meet that need to get to that purpose. So Jesse had all the sons lined up, and he left David out there. Why didn't he get David? Why didn't he grab David and put him in the lineup to be selected for the next big thing? He left out his baby. Listen, we can't have favorites, y'all. Parents, we can't have favorites with our children. Okay? So here in the story, we see a little bit of favoritism, maybe. Or did Jesse not know the assignment on David? Just because all the brothers were bigger, stronger, and taller, and just because David was smaller, I guess he thought he couldn't be a king. So let me tell you something, you just because you don't look like everybody else, do what everybody else does, doesn't mean you're not the next best thing. Just because you find yourself out there in the field all by yourself, let me help you. Isolation leads to elevation. And there's some, you know what, can, can Garvin, can I uh, pick on you? He gave me the thumbs up. He had to leave North Carolina and go to Georgia. When Garvin left, he was not athletic at all, y'all. He wasn't. <laughs> Pastor said that Georgia water. Garvin was not athletic at all. But when he got to Georgia, he was isolated. And while he was isolated, God began to do a work in his life. And then God started elevating him. Am I right? Garvin, do you feel elevated nowadays? Amen. He's one of the top swimmers. Look out, stand up, Garvin. Stand up. When Garvin left, he was right here, and he, he was walking like this. Now Garvin's bigger than me, stronger than me. He dresses better than me sometimes. But God has elevated him to another level. Go ahead and sit down. So because you get isolated, don't get upset because God is working on you. God is doing something in you. He's trying to get your attention. You find yourself frustrated. Oh, nobody don't want to talk to me. Nobody don't want to hang out with me. People always just looking at me funny. 
But what they don't understand is God is setting you up for something great, something good. And you might not understand it right now, but I'm telling you right now, God is setting you up. Listen, it's okay to be smart. It's okay to be the top person in the class. Because let me help you. Those, those people that pick on you because you're smart, those are going to be the people that you hire. Right? All the people that talked about you and picked on you, now you got your own business, your own company, or you got your own thing. Now they're standing in your employment line trying to get a job from you because you were smart. You did the right thing. You didn't realize it was okay to be different. And it's okay to be different. So I want you to understand it's a new day, y'all. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be isolated. I want you to get that. It's okay. Amen. I'm done. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> Give God some praise. Amen. So, for everybody that's in here, do we have anybody that says, hey, we understand it's a new day, it's a new season, but we have to connect with our Lord and Savior Jesus, because without Jesus, we're not going to be able to do it. And if we have anybody in the building, in the sanctuary, that wants to connect with Jesus, or wants to reconnect, replug in with our Lord and Savior, who wants to give their life to Christ, who wants to come down and recommit their lives, come on down. Come on down and get recharged, get connected with Christ so you can start off that new day, that new season. Do we have one that wants to give their life to Christ today? Everyone, please stand. Parents, check with your babies. Ask, are you connected? Make sure they're connected with Christ. Do we have one that would like to recommit their lives to Christ? We found ourselves going in the right direction, and then there was a life change. There was a situation that happened and caused us to go astray. Amen. We have anyone that would like to come down for prayer? Come on down. It's okay. Bring your youth down. All of you, bring your babies down for prayer. And get babies down. Connect with your family.
for every house that's represented in here. It's a new season. Whatever you put your hand on, whatever you set yourself to do, it shall prosper. It's a new season. It's a new season. Come on, you're not going to leave you out. To that season of new. Give it over to God. You've been holding on to it. It's been pulling you back. You won't let it go. And you keep finding yourself turning to that situation. Let it go. And walk into your new. Let it go. And walk into that new. Leave those friends that's trying to hold you back, trying to set you back, and go into that new. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and mercy, God. And we thank you, God, for your unlimited chances you have given us. Mistake after mistake, you have been there to pick us back up. And God, we say thank you. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory, God. And Father, now we ask you to guide us. Order our steps. Convict us with our wrong thoughts and wrong steps. Move us in the right direction. When we want to say the wrong thing, stop us. When we want to move the wrong way, convict us. God, connect us as a family. We come against every stronghold. We break every generational curse right now in the name of Jesus. All doubt and all fears, Father, take it away from us. God, we just love you. God, as we reconnect, we thank you for propelling us and pushing us and igniting us into a new direction. God, we just love you. We give you all the praise. And we thank you for the season of new. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Say, I'm something new. I'm something new.